Unfortunately, one of the key attractions of philately is how close to history you can get. Philatelists pride themselves in owning and studying these little artifacts which might be decades old, and then telling the stories that these postage stamps have captured through the imagery and significance of the stamps. But one of the most interesting stories to learn from is the one about the hobby itself, the history of philately, and learning about it might give us some clues as to where the hobby is going. So let's run through a quick history of stamp collecting, starting at the very beginning, in 1840, with the Penny Black. This is the brainchild of Sir Rowland Hill. It's the first adhesive postage stamp to have been printed, and it was issued in the UK, featuring Queen Victoria's head. Now, I have already made a video about that, but the origin of philately may be before the Penny Black, almost 70 years before, with John Burke in 1774. John Burke was the Receiver General of Stamp Duties in Ireland, and he started to collect revenue stamps that were being issued for the first time in the country. Now, his collection is owned by the Royal Irish Academy in Dublin, and revenue stamps today are considered Cinderella philately. So you can argue that Cinderella philately preceded stamp collecting or any form of philately or postage stamp almost by 70 years. So going back to 1840, meet Dr. John Edward Gray. He's a British zoologist that went out and bought penny blacks and two pence blues the day they were issued. This was to capture and remember this historical moment, therefore making him arguably the first stamp collector ever. He then also collected the stamps that other countries began issuing, and even later wrote a catalogue about stamp collecting, which... A hand catalogue of postage stamps for the use of collectors. John Edward Gray, PhD. This is a reprint of his 1862 catalogue, and just by reading his introduction, you get to see that his reasoning for and enthusiasm of stamp collecting hasn't really changed in over 150 years. This could have been a stamp collector today that wrote this. Another thing he claims in his introduction is that he was the original person to propose the idea of the postage stamp, long before Sir Roland Hill, which is an interesting claim. Now, let's get back to the timeline. So stamp collecting had a slow start throughout the 1840s, as you can imagine. The idea of stamp collecting was referenced a few times in newspapers, but by 1850, there were almost 20 locations around the world that were issuing stamps. And that's when the enthusiasm behind stamp collecting began to pick up. In 1852, a Belgian schoolmaster was encouraging students to take an interest in stamps because it would help them with their knowledge of geography, which is a great way to learn about geography. And Belgium was a hotbed for the hobby at the time as stamp dealers were starting to go into business there, and enthusiasm for stamp collecting was strong. Now, 1856 is a big year in philately. Firstly, the one cent magenta gets issued in British Guiana, which we know today as the most expensive stamp in the world. But also because of this guy, Edward Stanley Gibbons, whom at the age of 16 began selling stamps out of the window of his father's pharmacy, a super big stamp collecting enthusiast whom later published catalogues and ultimately founded the Stanley Gibbons company that has had a tremendous influence and presence in stamp collecting right through to today. Now going through the 1860s, the enthusiasm for stamp collecting was on the climb. The first stamp albums became available for sale. France had a couple of magazines that were just devoted to stamp collecting. And then we finally got a name for this hobby. Timbromania. Ugh. So, timbre being French for stamp, mania being enthusiasm or craze, uh, it just makes a terrible, terrible word for the hobby. Thankfully, by 1865, we saw a far more dignified name appear, philately. It was coined by a Frenchman, Georges Herpin, and has Greek roots, meaning a lover of no taxes, which I think is referring to the fact that you don't have to pay for a letter received, as it's paid for by the sender in the use of a postage stamp. Whatever, it's way better than Timbromania. Another important thing that was happening during the 1860s was an effort to organize the hobby. Many collectors were coming together to form societies and clubs, of which one was the Philatelic Society London, which I'll talk about in a little bit. Now, the 1870s were a bad decade for stamp collecting. Much of the enthusiasm that was generated in the 1860s had died down. Some stamp magazines stopped publishing, many of these societies and clubs closed down, but there was one hero that stood up during this time. Philip von Ferrari. This guy is a legend. He had what you must consider as the greatest stamp collection of all time. He had the one cent magenta, a blue Mauritius post office. He had the tres scaling yellow. He had everything. And he even hired the best stamp dealer in Paris to curate and look after his collection. He was a celebrity and definitely a real legend in the stamp collecting world. Now, the 1880s. The big thing that happened during this decade is that North America woke up to the idea of stamp collecting. So much so that an association was formed in 1886 known as the American Philatelic Association, as we know today as the American Philatelic Society. 
For the next 100 plus years, and even today, organized philately in the form of societies and clubs proves to be vital to the existence and the spread of philately. They provide resources for their members, they publish literature on the hobby, they also organize events and shows that ultimately bring stamp collectors together, which lacked during the 1870s and we saw the decline of enthusiasm and interest. But now during the 1880s, there's more clubs and societies and therefore we see more shows and events happening throughout the 1880s and the 1890s and into the 1900s. Now, passing the turn of the century to 1906 and keeping to the theme of organized philately, that Philatelic Society London that was established in 1869 is now named Royal Philatelic Society London. It got the prefix Royal from King Edward VII, who was a stamp collector. Also, his son Prince George, who is future King George V, was honorary vice president of the society from 1893 through to 1910. He was a very enthusiastic stamp collector. And this gives stamp collecting the right to say that it is the hobby of kings because quite literally, kings are collecting stamps, which just adds to how cool stamp collecting is. Now, continuing through the 1900s, of course, we go through World War I, and then in 1918, airmail becomes a real thing. I know that the UK had a short-lived airmail route a little earlier than this, but in 1918, the United States starts a regular airmail route between New York, Philadelphia, and Washington, DC. This is the airmail stamp that was issued by the United States at the time, and it features the Curtis Jenny plane that was adjusted to carry mail. One sheet of these stamps accidentally gets printed upside down, and this generates a lot of hype and excitement in the philately world, of which the stamp gets known as the inverted Jenny, and becomes one of the most spoken about stamps in the world. But we can talk about that in another video. Now, moving on through the 1920s and 1930s, we saw some mild growth in stamp collecting. You would think 1940 would be a big celebration for stamp collectors, as this is the 100th anniversary of the Penny Black. However, the world was a little occupied with something else. Yep, the Second World War. And the Second World War had a big impact on stamp collecting for a number of reasons. Both the Axis and Allies were using stamps for propaganda purposes, which is the first time we're really seeing stamps used to communicate strong messages. Also, when the soldiers return back from war, we see the birth of the baby boomer generation, a generation that has been very enthusiastic towards stamp collecting over the last 60 years during our time. Another key thing that happened was a liking towards the tangible investments. People had seen currencies of different countries absolutely devastated. And as a result, people are interested in investing in the tangible, such as paintings or precious metals, such as gold. Well, one of those things would be stamps. So stamp collecting is seen a little more as an investment opportunity. And finally, the White House is collecting stamps. Franklin D. Roosevelt was a very enthusiastic stamp collector who was using stamp collecting as a way to calm himself down during stressful times. He was frequently seen sorting his stamps through his stamp albums in photographs and videos. He was also a member of the American Philatelic Society. And now we can not only say that this is the hobby of kings, but also the hobby of one of the most powerful people in the world, the United States president. It just keeps getting better. So going into the 1950s, we see one of the best decades for stamp collecting. There was growing enthusiasm in the hobby. The popular Life magazine's May issue of 1954 features a cover. First time in color, eight pages of the world's rarest stamps. Clearly the world has a fascination in philately at this point in time. Also stamp dealers were opening up stamp shops all over the world. It was clearly becoming a very popular hobby. Window shopping in Manhattan. What's the product? It's one that holds enrapturing fascination for the more than 12 million Americans who enjoy the nation's most popular hobby, stamp collecting. So avidly do these hobbyists pursue their avocation that a whole industry has developed for the purpose of cataloging, expertizing, reporting, buying, selling, and otherwise dealing in or with postage stamps. This young woman is interested in a set of stamps put out by the Southwest African government in commemoration of the coronation of Queen Elizabeth. After the 1950s, stamp collecting grew steadily throughout the 1960s. And then stamp collecting had a moment. The 1970s or mid 1970s. I consider this somewhat of the rock star age of stamp collecting. And no, it's not because we found out later that two big rock stars at the time, John Lennon and Freddie Mercury were once stamp collectors as children. Although that kind of helps. It's because stamp collecting as a hobby had its biggest performance yet. 
From the second half of the 1970s throughout the entirety of the 1980s, stamp collecting exploded. Participation in some stamp clubs and societies and events almost doubled during this time. With all this hype into stamp collecting, there was a strong demand for stamps, and therefore a strong supply was printed, and the two fed off each other. So stamp collectors were buying many stamps from dealers who were then buying stamps from countries as they were being issued. And countries were therefore supplying them, pushing them back on the dealer, and the dealer was pushing them back on the stamp collector. And we saw this over surplus of stamps being generated and circulated. Some countries printed some nonsensical stamps just to be part of the action. And you can see that also with the first day covers, the way they were overly issued with the promise that these will be worth something one day in the future. One particular event during the 1980s comes to mind. To me, there's no better example of how stamp collecting overdid itself during this time. The Royal Wedding of 1981 with Prince Charles and Princess Diana. It seems like almost every country in the world issued several stamps about this wedding. And they're not the greatest stamps either. And I'm not joking when I say almost every country. Even North Korea issued stamps about the Royal Wedding. Just to get a slice of the action. North Korea! What does the Hermit Kingdom care about the Royal Wedding? You could even get Royal Wedding albums like photo albums where you could just place all your stamps in them from all over the world where they even seemingly look the same. I gotta clean this up now, why did I do this? Now this glorious era in stamp collecting came to a screaming halt and I believe it was around 1993. Well, that was when its last moment happened with the issuing of the Elvis stamp in the USA. This was the biggest issue that has ever happened. It was the most successful issue. 500 million copies were sold and since then it hasn't been the same. In the mid-1990s, stamp collectors were starting to feel burnt. Their investments into stamps during the 1970s and 1980s weren't actually appreciating to a higher value. So the bubble that started in the mid-1970s definitely popped by the mid-1990s. Another key thing to point out is that eBay launched in 1995, and shortly after, stamp collectors were taking full advantage of this platform where they can now sell stamps directly to one another. This definitely caused a decline in the brick and mortar stamp stores that were seen in all the streets of all the cities. Stamp dealers were either going out of business or also going online and taking advantage of this new way of doing business. Along with that is the rise of the internet, which is providing all sorts of new factors into the hobby of stamp collecting. Relatively less stamps are being used as email and online billing take shape. But forums and online communities start to generate where stamp collectors can now connect with one another through the internet. Several stamp societies and clubs show decline in membership after the year 2000. And that's not necessarily a decline in enthusiasm for the hobby or for the number of stamp collectors out there. We don't actually know how many stamp collectors there are out there. There's no one centralized location that you can just round us all up and count a number. And there's so many different ways you can be an active stamp collector. Maybe you're part of a society or community or online forum or get involved through social media on Facebook or Instagram or Twitter. Or maybe you don't use any technology at all. Wait, that reminds me. In 2016, some guy started making YouTube videos online. Hey, it's my video. I can put myself in it. But that does bring us to what the future has in store for stamp collecting. I don't think the last 20 years have been the best 20 years for stamp collecting. But I do see opportunity for more moments to come, for rejuvenation in the hobby. And here's why. Firstly, China, India and much of Asia has tremendous enthusiasm for stamp collecting apparently. And the populations there are gaining disposable income. So we may see big things from them in the future. Secondly, I don't think stamp collecting has kept up enough with the internet. Yes, stamp collectors definitely were pioneers with adopting eBay and online community forums. But today those websites and those community forums have aged. They're using old internet formats that might be unappealing for new stamp collectors to find information. There's also more ways to share and experience the hobby and learn about it through the internet, of course, but through social media and blogs. There's a lot of great blogs out there by individual stamp collectors that just don't get enough attention. And as I've already mentioned, there's relatively less stamps used on mail today as a result of email or prepaid letters or online billing. And this is a great thing for the hobby. This ultimately will generate more interest in stamps. When you get them in the mail, it piques your curiosity. You're fascinated to see a colorful, bright stamp on a letter today because it's a rarity. 
Stamp collectors shouldn't be in the game because it's easy. They should be in it because it's fascinating and because there's a little challenge to it. Less stamps in the mail is definitely going to equal more excitement when you find them. And I think that post offices are issuing more unique and interesting stamps today that are going to also contribute to that. All these conditions point to a very favorable climate for stamp collecting, but I do think that stamp collectors can help contribute towards shaping this future. You could join a society or a community or online forum. Find ways to share the hobby with others, get creative, update websites, make it interesting again. All in all, I think it's a really great time to be a stamp collector. There's so much to look back on and there's so much to look forward to that I'm really excited to see what comes next. Also, I'm in a time that I can make YouTube videos about these stamps and then share them with a global community that I can interact with. Wow, just think about it. What's next?